Hey guys, in today's video I am going to be reviewing the new L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear Foundation. I'll be giving you a demo of how it applies, doing some swatch comparisons, and then letting you know my overall thoughts of the foundation so you can decide whether or not it's going to be a good match for you. If this sounds like something you're interested in, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hello, my name's Tanika. You can click subscribe just down below there. Let's start off with some details. This foundation claims to have a buildable coverage. It's long wearing, says it hides the appearance of fatigue and blemishes while keeping the skin hydrated with the added benefit of Hyaluronic Fresh Complex that increases the level of water held by the skin. Wow, fancy. It comes in this really nice glass bottle with a pump. You get 30 mils of product and it retails for 31.95 Australian. Now here in Oz, there are only 10 shades to choose from, which isn't the best considering over in the US, they have a range of 30 shades. Now, I don't know if they're trying to test out the market first, they just expanded their true match range to 40 shades. So I believe that they are definitely capable of having a larger shade range. Maybe they just want to test the waters and see how popular it is first. I don't know. But hopefully we get some more shade options soon. So on to my review. While we're on the topic of shades, let's start there. I have the lightest shade that is available here called 20 Ivory. And unfortunately, it is too dark for me. So I end up buying one of the US shades from eBay. This is 400 pearl and it is a much better match for me. It looks quite fair at first, but once it's blended into my neck, it matches me perfectly. This one is the lightest shade available in the US range and it has a neutral undertone. I'll link the seller down below. I end up paying 28 Australian dollars in total, including shipping. So a little bit cheaper than what it's worth in Australia. I'll insert some swatches now so you can get a feel of the shades. Okay, so here we have the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear in the lightest shade available in Australia, 20 Ivory. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear lighter shade available in the US, 400 Pearl. Here we have the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. This is the lighter shade available in Australia called 0.5N Porcelain. Here we have the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation in the shade 110 Porcelain. This here is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define in the shade F1. I do usually add some lightning drops to this. Here we have the Maybelline Superstay Foundation. This is one of the US shades called 110 Porcelain. And here we have MAC Studio Fix in the shade NW10. Now for reference, I have combination skin. I do get a little oily throughout my T-zone, but then if I have any breakouts, I can get quite dry around them. The formula of this foundation is a satin matte, which I really love because it doesn't look too drying on the skin. I find that it looks more skin-like than a pure matte foundation, which helps you not to look as makeup-y and like cake face kind of thing. I do agree that it has a high medium to full coverage. I like to apply two layers to achieve this. And in total, I use around three pumps of foundation. I tried applying it with a brush and I did really like the coverage, but I like to go over the top with a sponge as it leaves that nice flawless finish. I do like to set this foundation in place with a powder, mostly throughout my T-zone and then just lightly on my cheeks. It feels really lightweight on the skin and it's a very comfortable foundation. One thing I know that does turn some people off of products is fragrance. And this one does have a fragrance. It's quite floral, but I feel like once it's on the face, it doesn't linger. For longevity and wear, this foundation wore really well for around that seven to eight hour period. After that is when it started to look a little bit oily and it was breaking up in some areas of my face. I'll insert a picture now of how the foundation looked on my chin after about nine hours. So it is a long period to be wearing the foundation, but as you can see, it did start to crack and break up. I do have some other foundations in my collection that don't do this, but with saying that they are a matte foundation, not a satin matte. So they are made to last that little bit longer. So for a satin matte formula, this isn't out of the ordinary for me and I still think it lasted really well. Now, one of my biggest issues with foundations has to do with me and my damn sweat mustache. If a foundation doesn't last on the mustache area, I'm afraid it's not going to do that well in my collection. 
It is winter here at the moment and it does get quite cold but the days can still be pretty warm and I have definitely still been sweating. Now the test is when I sweat I get a tissue and I dab the area. If the foundation moves it's a no-go. So I am very pleased to say that the foundation stayed in place and there was very little transferring. So overall I agree with majority of the claims. It has a buildable coverage. It covers the appearance of fatigue and blemishes while keeping the skin hydrated. I really love the finish of this foundation and as I said, it looked very natural on the skin. As for the long wear claim, I think it's going to be different for everyone. If you've watched the Taylor's review or Nakia Joy, they absolutely love this foundation and both said that it wears really, really well on them. Nakia Joy has very oily skin while the Taylor has dry skin. So I think this is one of those foundations you just have to try out yourself and see how it goes. I do think that this foundation would be suited for most skin types and you can get that medium to buildable coverage depending on what you like. It has a really beautiful finish, it blends easily and it's a foundation I would definitely recommend. Lastly, let's get on to the demo and I will show you how it applies on me. Alright, so here is the foundation. I'm going to put two pumps just on this palette here. It is quite a runny formula. So super lightweight, as I mentioned. I'm just applying this all over my face with a brush and I haven't covered up any of my blemishes because I want you to be able to see the true coverage of the foundation. So I'll do one side with my Sigma F82 brush. So this is what I mean when I said it looks super fair. But once I blend it down my neck, like that's just my shade. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like with the brush application. As you can see, it just looks like I can see the marks from the bristles. So that's why I prefer the Beauty Blender. So I'm going to use that for this side of my face. All right, so this is what the sponge side looks like. As you can see, the coverage is more medium. You can see a bit more of my redness coming through, but I feel like the finish is a lot nicer with the sponge. So I'm going to go in with one more pump of the foundation to build up the coverage. All right, and then this is the foundation completely on. As you can see, these blemishes are still peeping through. If I did cover them up with a concealer beforehand, like I usually would, then you wouldn't be able to see them. But this is why I say the foundation has a high medium to full coverage, because to me, this isn't completely full. Okay, well that is all from me today. I hope you enjoyed watching and this video was helpful for you. If it was, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions about the foundation, make sure you leave them down below. I do try to cover as much as I can, but if I've missed something, I would love to have a chat about it with you in the comments. If you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. And if you're after more foundation reviews, I will link my whole foundation review playlist down below. All right, well, I hope you are all having a fabulous day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.